Welcome to the tutorial, Animating an Effect Over Time. So in this tutorial, I'm going to start by showing you how to animate over time in Animate and then switch over to Animate Pro. So to begin, we're going to look at the blur effect once again um, that's attached to the punching bag, which means that it's the punching bag that'll get blurry. So right now, if we go to the Render View mode, we can see that the punching bag is blurry from frame one. But what if we want it to get blurry and then say unblurry because our camera closes in on it and it comes into focus. So what we can do in that case is animate our effect over time. So to animate an effect over time, unlike all your other drawing elements, your effect doesn't have a function column. This might be a lot for you to understand, but I'll try to make it as visual as possible. So if we go into the X sheet view, you can see that the punching bag, and this is just the drawing of the punching bag, has its own column, as does all the other parts, but these are just drawing columns. Uh, they don't really indicate anything about uh, key framing or movement. For those columns, we have to go over here. And these columns are function columns, um, and you can see that by the camera's movement, uh, which is indicated here. Um, to see more function columns, you can click on this arrow, and it'll open up this extra section. And right now, it's empty. So if we go back to the timeline, we realize that we have to create a function column for the radius of the blur. And if you remember, when the radius of the blur was at zero, the punching bag remained clearly in focus, whereas when we increased the radius to 6.5, it became blurry. So right now, if we double click on the radius, nothing happens. So in order to create a function column, you can do two things. You can either double click on the blur layer to open up the layer properties and click on this button right here to create a function column. If we close this and go back to the X sheet view, you'll see now a function column exists for the blur effect module and specifically for its radius. So if we undo that, it disappears. And let's go back into the timeline. The second way that you can create a function column for the blur is simply by opening the data view, which is this view right here. Here we see the radius. And what you can do from here is click on the plus sign to create a keyframe. Um, and you can do that this way, you can add a keyframe this way, you can use the keyboard shortcut F6, etc. But just in creating that single keyframe, if we go back to the X sheet, we'll see that once again, uh, this function column has been created for the blur effect. And now that we have that function column, we can say that the first keyframe we would like this punching bag to be blurry, but say by frame 30, we would like for our radius to be zero. So we want it to go from blurry to clear. And once again, we can't see that in the OpenGL view and even in the render view, it's slow if you're dragging your playhead across. So what you'd really have to do is render um, a preview. So it always asks you that some frames have been rendered because in the previous tutorial, I did a, a render preview. Um, and it asked me if I want to render these frames again. And I do because at that time I, I didn't have um, this effect animated over time. So I'm going to say yes. I don't know if you noticed that, um, but as the, we get closer to the punching bag, it actually gets quite a bit clearer. Um, let me see if I can actually just bring the playhead across. So here it's pretty clear. You can see how sharp the line is, and here it's quite blurry. So that's how you would animate an effect over time. The last thing I wanted to show you is that now that you have a function column, you can actually do a lot of the animating in the Bezier editor or the function editor. Um, but most people use the function editor actually just to refine their animation. So to access the function editor, you can double click instead of on the blur, uh, which would bring up the layer properties again. 
and you have to double click on its parameter here, the radius. And it brings up the Bezier editor. So I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning of the tutorial, I double clicked on this and nothing happened. And that's because it didn't have a function column. But now that it does, you can um, do a lot of your editing here. And right now the relationship is linear. The punching bag's radius goes from being 6.5 to 0 over 30 frames at a constant rate. But you you know you can change that curve um, and have a, a little bit of a an ease in ease out going so it might suddenly drop off and get very clear, etc. Um, and you can actually do all the keyframing um, and all the animating through the Bezier editor as well. But like I said, most people don't. They use it mostly just to do refinements and velocity. Um, and things like that. So now let's take a look at Animate Pro. So in this scene, I don't know if you remember um, from the previous tutorial, we added the Blur Radial to the Karate Master. Um, so we're going to look for that effect right now in the timeline. Okay, so here it is. So like I said, when you add effects, so let me zoom in here so you can see it. So we see the Karate Master and the Blur Radial together here. Um, so we added this Blur Radial from the module library into the network view, connected it to the Karate Master between this group and the composite. And that's always, always done through the network view. But as I mentioned before, it does appear in the timeline view and often in a way that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, we don't know why the blur radial is not connected to the facial features uh, of the Karate Rabbit because we know for a fact that in the camera view, it blurs the entire rabbit's body. However, despite the fact that it's in a strange place in the timeline view, in order to animate this effect over time, we have to do it in the timeline view just as we did in animate. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to shorten this length a bit so we have enough room horizontally and I'm going to open the data view as well. So for the blur radial if we open its properties we see the radius is here again and just like in animate we have to create a function column for the radius. So I'll do exactly the same things I did before. We'll scroll all the way down to where the functions are for the camera um, and actually the punching bang is animated so it has a it has a column here as well. Um, and then we're going to open up this other view. Go back to the timeline. And this time I'll just create the function column by adding a keyframe. We'll go back just to verify it's there. So blur radial radius. And then we'll scroll down to say frame 30 again and do the exact same thing at a, at a keyframe. So here we have on keyframe one, the radius is set to zero. So I guess I didn't leave the radius at 6.5 like I did in animate. So we can change that quickly just by changing the keyframe value here. I don't know why I keep choosing 6.5. It doesn't really matter well, what you blur it to. Um, but the important thing to note is that your playhead is on keyframe one. So that change I made belongs to keyframe one and was recorded on that keyframe. And as I scroll down, the keyframe that I added here on frame 30 still has the value of zero. And I don't think I need to render a preview again. I think you understand what's going on here. Um, and once again, you can always double click on this radius to bring up the function editor uh, to do any of those refinements and velocity uh, for the way that the effect uh, is animated over time. So once again, just to reinforce the only difference between Animate and Animate Pro when animating an effect over time is that you should always add your effect to start in the network view and then do a search for it in the timeline view in order to animate it. So that's it for the tutorial, Animating Effect Over Time. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Creating Basic Effects.